Your fashion glory. Oh. Because, by the way, Imogen, not only are you an incredible, like, musician, but, like, you're, like, a fashion icon. You know this, right? Oh, my gosh. That's the <laughs> nicest compliment anyone has ever given me. That's all I've ever wanted for my life. So, thank you. I mean, totally true. By the way, Imogen Clark, where are you coming to us from? So, I'm actually in Nashville right now. So, very excited doing a heap of songwriting sessions and it's very very fun so heading love to it. la next week which is great love it love it actually welcome to town thank you so much we're, we're in the gulch you know where all the tourists take the photo oh, with the wings you know i love the gulch <laughs> beautiful part of town yeah well you're probably where in east nashville where all the cool kids are right actually at the moment i'm staying in wedgwood houston which is a lovely area too which is yeah. nice and close to everything and um yeah, but I also love the East. Honestly, every everything has changed so much since the last time I came here before COVID. Right, right. Because you came like early 2020, right? Like February? Yes, I just uh, just missed uh, being here during COVID. It was pretty crazy. I got on a plane and got home and within about two or three weeks of getting back to Australia, COVID hit. So it was a pretty, pretty intense time. Sure. Um, but I wish I'd, uh, you know, obviously I haven't been back in that whole space of time so it, it, it's changed Nashville has changed immeasurably since the last time I was here with all these new buildings and businesses right right like, what else have you seen I know you've been busy I've seen you like you've been around town doing all sorts of stuff like are you you know are you having a good time are you being creative oh, have you seen all your friends absolutely I'm trying to cram about six months worth of stuff into into only a couple <laughs> of weeks um right. so it's been intense I've I've had um you know, catching up with all these people I haven't seen in years, um, but then also everyday writing sessions. I feel like i um, so happy with the songs I'm, that are coming out at the moment. I feel like I'm writing, you know, some of the best stuff I've ever written and I'm so proud of it. And it's just really going wonderfully. I'm having the best time. I love it. Well, next time you come, Imogen, we'll have to like, you know, plan a show and like, we'll, we'll do something special and we'd love to meet in person your next trip to Music City. I would love to meet in person as well, and that would be wonderful. And hopefully next year there will uh, there will be some shows. So that would be yeah, wonderful. that would be amazing. That would be amazing, Imogen. But you know, I have to tell you, there's something I wanted to ask you because Imogen, like I'm not a musician, I, and I don't know how to articulate this question. Maybe you can help me articulate it a little bit better. But there's certain moments in some of your songs. I mean, there's there's some songs like if you hear "Free Fallen" by Tom Petty or, or or something like that. You know that you know you just get chills. Like I, I just get chills and that happens like when I hear like late night girl or nonchalant, oh. like it just oh. like, you know, like I, I'll listen to it and there's certain notes that you hit Imogen and it just literally runs up my spine. Oh. And I think in writing hit songs, there has to be a certain trick, right? Like with paintings, like certain tricks to bring people into a painting, right? Like, like when you can, when you say I can be in your light, good night girl, just hanging around. Like, there, there, I don't know how to articulate the question, but there is something, right? I know exactly what you're saying and thank you so much for I'm glad that that 
feeling comes over you because I my goal with songwriting is always to try and make people feel the way that I feel when I listen to music I love so that's a wonderful compliment and it's funny because I actually don't know if there's a if there's a a a formula to it because I certainly don't know it if there is I feel like the only way to um, make those moments happen is to be as honest with yourself when you're writing as possible and to just kind of let it flow out uh, in the most natural way like Joni Mitchell who is my favorite songwriter of all time she had this great quote that was that said um the 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 closer you get to your heart is the closer you get to everyone else's so I always live by that when I'm writing that idea that if I am really honest with myself and I just let it flow out as naturally as possible people will have that response because they can sense the sincerity so maybe there's something in that but honestly I think it's that's the beauty of songwriting is that we're all still figuring it out which a lot of us have no idea like how does it why is it always so different why is it so magical uh, who knows who knows so it's in other words an artist cannot sit down and say you know i'm gonna play a major chord or d minor chord and people are gonna turn around and love it it has to come from the soul basically i think so i that's how i would see it yeah i love it i love it imogen L let, let me go out into your background a little bit i know you're sick and talking about it but for my audience here you know i mean your, your dad like what a guy he's the one that really you know he was a little bit of a musician he's the one that like encouraged you to like listen to music and all that stuff um yeah. but tell us a little bit about like these memories like when you're you know little imogen around western sydney and he puts, <laughs> uh, he puts you know the headphones in you and you just get addicted to sound and you like your soul changes forever you know oh that's so sweet yeah um he he absolutely was the the, the only you know the main reason that i found music and i think even if i had found music at a later time in life if he, if he wasn't musical it would have taken me so much longer to realize that it was my biggest love you know so I'm always thankful to him for that it, you know I, I grew up in Western Sydney as you said and um and I just I thought it was so normal to have a dad that um played bass and wrote songs and sung and you know he would write musicals for his high school kids because he's also a high school teacher and it was just, I thought that was as normal as anything. To me, that was as normal as having a dad that um, was a lawyer or an accountant. You know, sure, it was, sure. it was, that was just what my family did. And um, a lot of my other, you know, cousins and uncles and aunties are musical. So it was such Your an world. important, uh, yeah, it was all, it was all around me. And my dad was, um, to his absolute credit, was a, a, a legend as far as would just let me, pick up any instrument even if it was expensive and I was a kid and he would just let me pick it up and play it and um so I have him to thank for so much of my um you know of this being my life now and and all of the early stuff I learned you know and he would help me set up my PA system at, at my cover gigs when I was 12, 13, 14 years old and he'd drive me to the gig because I couldn't drive yet and he would help me set up everything and teach me how the sound worked and everything so i owe so much to him amazing well we're so glad you came out the way you did because you know something like your new single compensating it's just you know the fruits of 20 plus years of you being on this earth but um, oh thank you that's so sweet it, it's it's a fantastic single imogen but but you know and, and you're also a great performer like a road warrior and you do it with style and speaking of road warriors and i and i respect my musician friends here in nashville so much you know like the, the weekend warriors and the ones that come home, uh, you know, Monday through Wednesday and then do the thing on the weekend. But you, my dear, did a hundred shows in a hundred days. Like <laughs> sweet mother of Tim Tams. What <laughs> just happened here? Like, wow, Imogen. I mean, doing anything for a hundred state days, anything at all requires Honestly. all sorts of like, like, tell us a little bit about this and the motivation and also like the days that you didn't want to do it like you know the <laughs> you're absolutely right it was um we had a lot of people going are you sure you want to do this this is a bit crazy um and I'm so glad we did it and I honestly slept for about two weeks at the end of it but um the, the motivation behind it was honestly you know coming from Australia where we had um basically two years of on and off lockdown during COVID where we literally 
couldn't leave our houses except for essential supplies. And, right. um, and so we were really deprived of um, the beautiful feeling of music and, and live music. And I missed going to live music shows, but I also missed playing shows like the most I'd ever missed anything. I was just aching for it. I really, it's such an important part of my life. And not only is it my job, it's my, it's my biggest love. So I felt like I had not only lost my employment, but I had lost a sense of who I was. So um, when, when we could tour again, um, we just went, oh, let's do Let's make up for all of the, <laughs> all of the shows we missed. Right. We couldn't do because I'm used to doing like so many shows a year and over the two years over 2020 and 2021 um, I think I played about 15 shows total and that was just crazy for me um, such a small amount so so we went let's do them all at once and let's do heaps of them and jam them all into 100 days and um, so a lot of them were you know they were pop-up shows in Sydney you know little um, jam nights guest appearances with other people support shows headline shows so it was yeah. a mixture of so much stuff and it was exhausting in the best possible way it was sure. really wonderful Sure. I mean, absolutely. They took away your purpose. I get it. it. You know, and I always thought of my Aussie friends, you know, like, especially like 2021, when some parts of the world were open, but you guys kind of like still were not. That must have been a little bit hard, right? Like when you saw all the oh. Nashville stuff going on, and you're still in like, you know, those three months at the end, like, was that a little like, annoying? absolutely, absolutely. It was um. so our biggest and most difficult for me lockdown was was the second half of 2021, which was pretty much the whole second half of the year was in lockdown and um, I remember looking on social media and seeing all these shows happening um, in Nashville and thinking oh, I just wish I could board a plane right now and head over there and it was it was actually you know you needed special exemptions and stuff to do stuff like that right, so I couldn't right. but I, I wished I could and um, I was just missing it so so much and um, yeah it, it was a really hard time and look you know obviously um, it's it's been hard for everybody and 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 I was a very I was someone that was very lucky in the in the scheme of um everybody and and who was most hit by this pandemic but gosh it's just good to be back it's just so good totally. to be back totally Imogen and, and what have you found coming back with like talking to your colleagues and what I mean is you know it's touring now in 2022 it is, it has like some unique challenges, uh, even though everyone is happy to be out there, it is more expensive to be on the road. You know, it's harder to get a crew, it's harder to get a bus, like people outside the industry don't know this, like sometimes you just don't get a driver. You know, there's like little things that are like a little bit, that make it a little bit more, more challenging now than maybe that it's been in a minute. Have you found, um, you know, a difference when you talk to your colleagues here? Absolutely. And I think it's actually a, um, it's, it's true here and it's also true in Australia. So we've had some, um, you know, some interesting chats with people. I just feel like um, it's, it's understandable because people, uh, you know, just the general public have, have tightened the purse strings a bit because, because the last few years have been hard and, sure. you know, you can, you, you completely understand that. Um, but it's been hard to sell tickets in Australia from everything I've spoken to all my sort of fellow musicians down there. And, you know, everyone's a bit a bit struggling to sell tickets and, and having, as you said, it's expensive to tour. So all those things, you know, we're certainly not out of the woods of this pandemic right. and the knock-on effects of this pandemic. Um, and I also think there are still some people who are very, you know, understandably still afraid to go out into crowds. Um and so I think, you know, it's, it's, we're going to be feeling the knock-on effects of this pandemic for a while, for a minute, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And, and that's, a, that's a really sad thing, but it, it, look, it's, it's a, it's a struggle, like getting back out there and touring, obviously there are always, there are challenges involved with that at the minute. Um, sure. But it's, I think, you know, the feelings in the rooms, the way that the atmosphere, it's, people are just so happy to be back you know in the presence of live music and so I think that makes it all worth it for me absolutely Imogen and you know like you've been so good with your time and we could spend the rest of the of the chats talking about you know your holiday shows that that that, that you've done you know the Hoot Nanny show in Melbourne and maybe bringing it back and or your nominations but but let's finish the way we started uh Imogen because I, I all kidding aside 
you've been recognized as well for your style. So I'm just going to take <laughs> it there. I'm sorry. I just got to take it there. No, like, that's lovely. Where did this come from? Because, and you can see the aesthetic, by the way, in your cover art, in your LPs, uh, you know, everywhere. It's like a beautiful thing. And by the way, I, you know, and I talk about this with, you know, with some friends. I, some friends have these amazing songs and they don't get the visuals right. And that gets me on fire. But you, my, my friend, you, you do. Uh, yeah. so, so where does this fashion style came from, Imogen? Is, is it like Sydney? Do you have influences? Like, because you've always been like a fashionista. Oh, this is, that's a very sweet. Thank you so much. I, um, look, I've always felt, um, you know, very strongly about, um, trying new things in, in fashion and I feel like um, you know it's always I, I get inspired by things I see online you know people that um, not so much you know what it's not always about sort of for me what is in the stores at the minute I kind of like to just see people on the street or, or people I follow you know um, artists that I respect and, and maybe what what they're wearing and it gives me ideas it's kind of like it's almost like another expression of you know my creativity because I, I love to write songs but then I'm also it's kind of another fun way of expressing my creativity to see something that someone else is wearing and not copy it but kind of take elements of it and form it into my own style and so honestly I've just been really enjoying um having my fashion style for the first time feel like it really reflects what's inside of me because you know for a long time I think I felt like well um young women are have to be uh, nice and pleasant and <laughs> and meek and maybe not too loud. Um, and I feel like I'm just embracing the loud kind of, you know, sassy attitude filled part of me in my music. So I have to express that in my style as well. So like lots of PVC and pleather and like loud colors and, it. you know, it all, it's all to do with, it all links up with, with um, the songs. And that's, you know, that's, it's just another experience way to express creativity amazing. amazing Imogen well look you've said it all you have a busy day ahead all I can say is okay compensating new single everyone check it out but most importantly Nashville is your home like I, I, I can just feel the vibe you this is your yeah. home like I'm sure everybody tells you every day this is your house <laughs> like trust me I've been here like three years now I know the people that belong we need your energy here Imogen so this is your home so welcome home oh thank you so much I can't wait to move here it's definitely on the card so thank you for having me you've been absolutely, absolutely lovely to chat to absolutely have a great weekend Imogen you too thank you bye